Benzene was first discovered by the great Michael Faraday, and at that time, chemists could figure out the molecular formulas of compounds, but they didn't know the exact dot structures. And so chemists knew that benzene contained six carbons and six hydrogens, but they weren't sure exactly how those atoms were connected. And so there were several different proposals for structures for benzene, and, and the winning structure was proposed by Auguste Kekulé, uh, who said that uh, benzene contains six carbons in a ring, and then you have alternating single and double bonds in that ring. And the story goes that Kekulé came up with this dot structure when he had a dream, and he saw some snakes bite each other's tails, and the snakes then whirled around in a circle, and that gave Kekulé the idea for the ring. So this is one possible dot structure for, for benzene, but I didn't have to draw my, my double bonds in this place. I, I can actually show a resonance structure for benzene, right? I could take these electrons, move them over here, push these electrons over here, and then these electrons would be over here. And so a resonance structure for benzene, right? I could have, uh, I could have my pi electrons over here, over here, and over here. So either one of these Kekulé structures is an acceptable dot structure for benzene. And remember, in reality, since these are resonance structures, uh, the actual molecule is more of a hybrid of these two molecules. And with that in mind, sometimes chemists, uh, sometimes chemists will prefer to represent benzene with, uh, with the six carbons in a ring and with a circle here in the center to represent the delocalization of those pi electrons. And, and so maybe this is the lazy way to, to represent benzene. And this is called a, uh, a Robinson circle after the great synthetic organic chemist Sir Robert Robinson. And so sometimes the Robinson circle is a useful way to represent benzene, and um, sometimes a Kekulé structure is over here on the left. And you would use a Kekulé structure if you're trying to show the mechanism of, of reactions that benzene does. All right, let's, let's look at how to name uh, derivatives of benzene. So here we have benzene with a methyl group coming off of it. And so you could just call this molecule methylbenzene. So that's one possible name for it. But most people don't call it methylbenzene. It's, it's, uh, it's called toluene. So it's a, such, a common, such a common molecule in organic chemistry that toluene is an acceptable IUPAC name. And in this example, we have an alkyl substituent that has only one carbon, right? This methyl group has only one carbon versus the six in the benzene ring. Well, what happened if your alkyl group had more carbons than your benzene ring, which is the situation over here on the right? So if we count up how many carbons we have, we have a total of seven carbons. And so in, in this case, we're actually going to name this as an alkane and name the benzene ring as a substituent coming off of our alkane. So a seven carbon alkane would be called heptane. So I can go ahead and write heptane here. And then I have a benzene ring coming off of carbon four. And when you're naming a benzene ring as a substituent, so it'd be, it'd be C6H5, substituent coming off of my, my ring here, we call it a phenyl group. So I have a phenyl group coming off of carbon four. So this would be four, Phenyl heptane as the IUPAC name for this molecule. Let's look at some other examples where we see uh, benzene with uh, with one group on the ring. And uh, these are all very famous monosubstituted benzenes. And uh, because they are so famous, the, their common name is acceptable in IUPAC nomenclature. Right, so a benzene ring with an OH group on it is called phenol, and we can use that when we're naming molecules. Uh, benzaldehyde, right, it would be an aldehyde coming off of a benzene ring. And, and benzaldehyde is, of course, famous for having the smell of almonds. It's a, it's a really, really wonderful smell. Um, which is which is also why you'll 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 hear some of this some of these molecules referred to as aromatic compounds and, and it originally is because of the smell and, and we're going to see in future videos uh, what aromatic means in a chemistry sense. Over here we have a benzoic acid, right? A carboxylic acid functional group uh, coming off of our, our our benzene ring here like that. And so here I have uh, seven of the uh, of the most famous and most common monosubstituted benzene derivatives. And so these are molecules that most professors will have you memorize because you can use these names when you're trying to name more complicated benzene derivatives. So commit these to memory. All right, let's look at uh, some di-substituted benzene derivatives, right? So this molecule over here on the left has two methyl groups coming off of the benzene ring. And uh, so this first molecule has a, ben has a methyl group coming off of carbon one and coming off of carbon two. So we could call this, we could call this one, two, dimethyl Benzene. That would be an acceptable IUPAC name. But whenever you have a benzene ring with uh, with two methyl groups on it, that's called, uh, the common name for that is xylene. And so if we wanted to uh, if we wanted to call this molecule xylene, 
All right, technically all three of these molecules will be xylene. They're all benzene ring with two methyl groups coming off of it. And, uh, and so we have to distinguish these xylenes from each other. And so when you have two groups that are right next to each other on a benzene ring, in this case my methyl groups, right? My methyl groups are right next to each other on, on my benzene ring. We say that that relationship is ortho, right? So I could call this molecule ortho xylene and that would be another acceptable name and uh, sometimes you'll 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 just see an O there so you call it O xylene and, and that's fine too we go over here to this molecule this is also xylene but we can see the methyl groups are in slightly different positions right now we would have one three dimethyl benzene so one three dimethyl benzene would be an acceptable name for this molecule and when you have uh, two groups that are that are a carbon away from each other, right? So this relationship is said to be meta in organic chemistry. So you could call this uh, uh, meta. Let me take off that M here, so I'm running out of room here. You could call this meta xylene. All right, so this is meta xylene or just M xylene. And then finally, another xylene molecule. This time, our two methyl groups would be at carbons one and four. So you call this one four dimethyl benzene. Um, so you call, let me go ahead and write that. And one four dimethyl benzene would be one IUPAC name for it. But again, most most people would call this uh, uh, would name this as a xylene derivative. So it's a xylene derivative. This time, my two groups are opposite each other. Right, so they're opposite each other on the ring, and we call this relationship para in organic chemistry. So you could say it's it's para xylene or also p xylene. Let's look at um, some more examples of di substituted uh, benzene rings. And uh, so here we go. We're actually going to use the the monosubstituted derivatives that we talked about above. So if I look at this molecule over here on on the left, I can see that there is a now this is the phenol portion of the molecule. All right, so I can go ahead and I can go ahead and say that this is uh, this is phenol, and then in terms of um, identifying the bromine, I there I have two options here. I could I could use a number. I could say okay that that bromine is at carbon four, so I could call this uh, four bromophenol, and that's an acceptable IUPAC name. Or I could use the OMP system that we talked about above. And when you have two groups that are opposite on the ring, right, we call that para. Right, so I could also call this molecule para bromophenol, right? So para bromophenol, and that's an acceptable name as well. Or I could even shorten it to P bromophenol. All right, let's do this. This disubstituted benzene uh, ring over here, and if I look at it, right, I can see that is benzoic acid. That's one of the ones that we memorized above. So I can go ahead and write the parent name as being benzoic acid right here, and I. And I, I now have to identify my substituent coming off of my benzene ring. Okay, so benzoic acid would make this carbon one, and then my substituent is coming off of carbon three, and my substituent is a nitro group. All right, so I could call this a three nitro benzoic acid, or I could say that the relationship between those two things coming off my benzene ring would be meta. All right, so I could call this meta. We call this meta nitro benzoic acid. So let me see if I have room here. So meta nitro benzoic acid, or I could just say M nitro benzoic acid. So so all of those would would be correct IUPAC names. Let's look at uh, poly substituted uh, benzene derivatives now. And so these are these are actually two of the more famous um, examples that we could do. Once again, we're going to try to find a mono substituted uh, parent name here. And if I look, I can see that I can see that right here. This would be benzaldehyde. And so usually aldehydes have have precedence over over alcohols. And so that's why we're going to name this as a benzaldehyde derivative. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's see, just to make sure I have enough room, I'm going to start naming it by saying. The parent name is benzaldehyde right here. And since the aldehyde gets, gets precedence, this will get a carbon one. We want to give the lowest number possible to our substituents coming off my ring. So I'm going to go this way. And uh, I can see that I have a group uh, coming off of carbon three, right? And it's an ether group. So we talked about how to name ethers as substituents. This would be a methoxy substituent. So this would be coming off of carbon three. So I'm going to write three methoxy like that. All right, and then I go over here to carbon four, and I can see I have an OH group. And uh, if I'm naming OH uh, an alcohol as a substituent, I would call this a hydroxy or a hydroxyl group. And I'm going to say that this is a hydroxy group at carbon four. So four 
hydroxy, 3-methoxy, benzaldehyde would be the IUPAC name for this molecule. This molecule is better known as vanillin. Right, so the smell of vanilla, it's probably my favorite smell, and so I really enjoy doing labs that, that involve the vanillin molecule. All right, let's, uh, let's do one more, another extremely famous example. I can see that if I'm trying to find a monosubstituted benzene derivative, that would be toluene right here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put toluene as my parent name. And uh, that would make this carbon one. The methyl group would become carbon one. So I go ahead and number to give the lowest number possible. And I can see that I have three nitro substituents located at two, four, and six. To, so to finish my IUPAC name, it'd be two, four, six. I have three nitro, so that'd be tri as my prefix. So tri nitro toluene. And so this is also a very famous molecule. Uh, it's not normally called 246-trinitrotoluene. Most people in the general public would, of course, know this as uh, TNT, right? So the famous explosive. So this would be TNT. And we just named it, uh, it of course, the name comes from um, the nomenclature for polysubstituted benzene derivatives. All right, so hopefully this video um, just shows you an introduction as to how to name um, molecules with benzene in them.